Greetings, everyone. Welcome to this episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast, episode number 44 with Dr. Sylvester Gaskin. Uh, this is a really interesting conversation, uh, primarily just for, I have to put it out front here, um, he's a major aviation geek. Uh, he has an engineering background for his undergrad, and it was just fascinating to hear um, just how deep his geekdom goes for that and um, listening to air traffic control. Uh, which I didn't even know you could do. Um, so it's just really, uh, really engaging conversation. I mean, he shares a lot of great stuff from his story and all that he's learned. And uh, yeah, just a lot about uh, uh, aviation and, you know, uh, engineering. So uh, really, really cool episode. I know you'll enjoy it. Uh, check out all the stuff that we mentioned in the episode in the show notes. And after this brief message from our sponsor, this is episode number 44 with Dr. Sylvester Gaskin. This episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast is brought to you by Top Hat, the teaching app that makes active learning come to life. Top Hat helps thousands of professors create their perfect course. Our app is easy to use and allows you to engage your class, adopt next generation textbooks, and run tests, all within a secure digital environment. See why faculty in over 700 colleges and universities across North America trust Top Hat to power their classrooms. Visit tophat.com slash higher ed geek that's tophat.com slash higher ed geek. Uh, start us off, just give you know, a brief introduction of yourself and your professional journey and how you got to be where you are today. <laughs> okay, it's been kind of a wild ride, I'll be honest with you. Um, I started off uh, undergraduate school, I went to Iowa State, and I, was studied, I studied aerospace engineering as an undergraduate, so... You know, the the whole idea of being a geek, I'm like, yeah, I, I truly am. I'm a rocket scientist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I got, the, I got the degree on the wall to prove it when people don't believe me. Um, and then um, I actually was working in the residence halls. I was a, I was a mentor for a, a learning community. You know, I was trying to find work in the aerospace industry, and it just wasn't it just wasn't working out. And then uh, a mentor of mine had suggested, you know, going into, going into student affairs. And I was like, yeah, sure, let me give it a shot. You know, it's a master's degree. It's... You know, it's a it's a free degree. I get a stipend at the deal. And we'll kind of see what happens. And so I did. I I got that. I actually really liked it. Um, my assistantship was in uh, multicultural affairs, um, and I, I really enjoyed the work that I did. And so when I um, I got my master's, I I just I kind of just jumped into the workforce. Um, you know, kind of put you know working for Boeing you know to the side, and. Um, yeah, I just started working. I, I worked at a small school in Minnesota for a couple of years. I, I dipped out of higher ed for probably four years after that. I, I, I was in the K-12 uh, sector, and I was in California at the time. I was doing some after-school programming and some uh, daytime work. And then I actually jumped back to the higher ed uh, about, I think it was about 2012. Um, so I took, the, I took the hiatus. I jumped back in. I was doing diversity work, and then an opportunity came uh, to do orientation work back in my hometown. I'm, I'm from Baltimore, uh, originally. And, um, opportunity came to, uh, you know, to go back to Baltimore to, to do orientation. I'd never done orientation before outside of like transfer orientation at a small liberal arts school was just, like 25 people. Now we're doing orientation sessions that were 250, you know, per session, you know, four per week. So I did that for a few years. And then, uh, you know, I was wrapping up the doctorate work and uh, an opportunity to come uh, to where I'm at right now at the University of Arizona. Um, and I had never been out here. I, I barely knew where Arizona was. Um, but I came out here. I actually just celebrated my year anniversary uh, last week. Nice. Congrats. Yeah. <laughs> so thanks. Uh, I work in the dean of students office. Uh, I do. I'm an assistant dean and I oversee uh, student government and student activities. Yeah, it's been it's been an interesting ride. Yeah. It has been. Never thought never thought I'd be here. Never. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I'm sure maybe there's like you know morsels from everywhere that you've been that you've gained like skills or knowledge or you know connections or something. But it seems uh, I mean kind of tr still a trajectory kind of onward and upward. Uh, you know now you have your doctorate, which is you know amazing to seeing more and more people doing that. But I know that was, uh, I think something that as I started following you on social media, that was kind of the, the odyssey that you were on was, uh, oh, man. getting that done. So, uh, and, and yeah. I actually just talked, I actually just talked to someone today. I met him at a, at a, 
at a conference a couple weeks ago. He's a, he's a graduate student. He's like, yeah, I'm thinking about you know doing my doctorate. And per, part of me is like, what are you thinking, man? <laughs> like, you got no idea what you're to get into. But you know, he talked about his research topic, and I was like, okay, you know, this is pretty interesting. Let me help you out. And so we actually talked today about you know research methodologies and theoretical frameworks. And you know, I'm reliving my doctorate stuff and. I had to stop myself. I'm like, I feel like I'm giving my dissertation to you again, and you don't. That's not what you asked for. Mm-hmm. But like any good, you know, doctorate student, when they're done, they don't want to talk about what they did until somebody asks them, and then it's just like, just it, it just all just comes right out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I guess it's good too. Like just helping to make sure people are making an informed decision about it. Cause it's not as if you're like, no one else should do it. It's awful. Whatever. It's just like, you know, yeah. If somebody's just like, Oh, I want to do it. It seems like they might be doing it on a whim. You're like, are you sure? Like, let's talk about that a little bit more. And then you're like, Oh, you have a really clear idea. Cause I feel like that's one of the initial things that could help propel someone and always motivate them is if you have a really clear, distinct sort of like, this is why I'm doing it. This is the question I want answered, or this is the research I want to do. Or, yeah. you know, it's like that, that can help, I guess, from my point of view versus some people might just kind of do it to do it. And they're kind of miserable the whole time. And then they're, you know, they're, <laughs> they're not going to speak of it well. Cause it's like, it's always going to be hard. Like it's going to be a hard thing. But so you need that like internal motivation. I'd imagine, you know, and, like knowing either like really specifically what you want to like, answer or you know mm-hmm. do with the you know like what you want as like your next position or where you want to go or something so um yeah so yeah that's uh, i i yeah. always mention i always mention it's a lifestyle change because mm-hmm. you carry it with you like everywhere you go it's with you mm-hmm. you know i remember there was a time where right before a busy orientation season i went on vacation for like a week i went to see family i went to the beach and dragging you know in a suitcase with me was all my research it's just you just you just bring it with you. It comes along for the ride. Huh. And now that I'm done, I don't have I don't have anything to bring with me. And like it feels phenomenal. It's it's a great feeling. I can actually go on vacation and I have to worry about <laughs> like like I don't have to worry about I have to read these articles. It's like I can actually sit on the beach and just listen to the waves. Yeah. That that's yeah, that's, that's it. Um well I guess too, because I was thinking and maybe I don't know if this has been your experience, like with friends, families, colleagues, or anything like that, I guess, because I was, I was thinking that you were going to mention in terms of, like, carrying it with you, like, that title is now, like, you know, that carries weight. <laughs> Do you feel like that is, has kind of changed sometimes, for better or worse, like, how you interact with other people? And I don't know how you kind of, because some people, I think, kind of, you know, they downplay it because they don't want to make it a thing, but it's also, like, you put a lot of, like, blood, sweat, and tears into this thing, so you'd want to be like, yes, I, you know, I've a, you know, earned my doctorate. So it's like, I don't know, how do you, how do you kind of come at that? <laughs> yeah, it's funny because... um there's two things there. The family aspect of it, I think, you know, my family was pretty, you know, I, I defended in 2017, but I didn't walk until 2018. So once I defended, they, you know, they sent me the diploma in the transcript. Congratulations, Dr. Gaskin. That's it. But I actually got the hood in June of this year. Uh-huh. And so my family, you know, came to the ceremony and, and, uh, I remember, I remember right after I defended, my dad kind of looked at me, he's like, I'm proud of you, but I'm not calling you doctor. <laughs> And, and I, I knew it was like joking stuff like that. Cause I know he'd go to work and be like, yeah, well, my boy's got, my boy's, my boy's called doctor now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and I have a, I have a little nephew. He calls me Dr. Uncle. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he was, and the funny thing about that was when I was defending, uh, it was done through like a live stream and he was there and he just, he just got an iPhone. And so throughout the dissertation, he's kind of like listening in the background, but he's sending me poop emojis during <laughs> During my defense, so I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm answering questions and stuff like that. And I look at my phone, it's buzzing. It's like, hey, Dr. Uncle, you know, poop, 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 like, you know, a string of it. And I'm like, yeah. I know what he's trying to do, but, you know, I, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm focused on it. But I think professionally, it was kind of weird when people introduced me as, as doctor. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's all right. But, you know, when I'm in formal settings, I'll, I'll use the title. But, you know, like I said, I work in student government and student activities. I don't think there's a single student here who calls me doctor, and if they do, I'm like, yeah, you don't have to, you don't have to do that. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, don't worry about it. Um, but there have been a, there have been some times where there have been some, you know, people professionally that don't show you that respect. So it's like, no, 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 the name has changed. It is Doctor Gaskin. Yeah, but that that's a very I do that very rarely because it, it it seems to me it feels like I'm being a jerk. Um, but but quite honestly, I mean. It's funny when my spouse and I go out like to university functions, she calls, you know, Dr. and Mrs. Gaskin, you know, like we're like this formal setting, almost like the 50s. 
Mm-hmm. Like when you watch movies about college in the fifties, when the dean comes in with their spouse and they're introduced as that, she jokes about that. But when we go to an event, it's like, hey, it's Sylvester. Hey, this is your spouse. Uh, what's up? You know. So I mean, it it just kind of depends. But I I just know my my nephew. I'll never forget that. I think I still have those text saves of him. You know, nothing <laughs> nothing but a string of poop. Yeah. <laughs> as I tried to defend to become a doctor. Yeah. Um, well, because yeah, I think that's like the perfect sort of capsulation of like um like what family is you know like <laughs> like they'll be proud of you but also like keep you humble or just sort of like you know just gotta rib you a little bit it's just like yeah we're just keeping you you know keeping you honest keeping you humble but we like certainly are proud and help celebrate that moment and share it and all that um and uh yeah I, I could just imagine yeah i was wondering if you've experienced that yet of just like yeah sometimes people like you know yeah they come at you kind of formal and like you always just make sure to have that qualifier of like yeah you can call me sylvester but then other people are it seems like they're kind of like doing a little dig like deliberately not calling you that or something mm-hmm. or like omitting it so it's just like hey just remember like you know you just kind of professionally or sort of you know respectfully kind of put them in their place just to make sure like you know yeah. you know what's going on but yeah it's a lot of baggage there i'm sure for some people if it's just sort of like like oh i wish i had that you know or just i don't know it, 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 yeah, it's just all that kind of stuff so it's just like it's a new you know new title it's you know it's just a lot to it so it, it definitely changes your life in a certain way but you know yeah it's, uh, yeah nobody told me to be this weird mm-hmm. <laughs> nobody, nobody said to be this weird but I'm, I'm living in the weirdness i'm just going with it yeah yeah well, I'm curious because, uh, yeah, I just moved to Baltimore a couple of months ago with my yeah. uh, with my wife, Jen, and um, and she says hi because I know you, you talked to her uh, a little while ago when she was doing a little bit of her job yeah. search for the job that she got now. So Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, and Yeah, I mean, uh, so we've enjoyed living here. You know, this is where you're from, and um, mm-hmm. I'm curious, you know, you went to Iowa for undergrad and grad, but, like, yeah. you know, I always like talking with people, you know, you have this very different major that, you know, you you know, thought you wanted to, you know, pursue. And I'm wondering maybe if anything specifically from the academic side of things or the other stuff that you were involved in, you know, it's always cool just to hear like specifically for you, you know, you're helping to provide these sort of experiences for other students. Like yeah. what did you get personally and or professionally from your own undergraduate experience that still sort of resonates with you today? I think, um, it's, it's interesting because I, I think about it a lot and, and, um, well, right, right now there are a lot of, you know, engineering students who kind of work with the student government and they see that I have an engineering degree. And so there's like this natural connection of, um, of yes, yeah, staying up on night trying to do calculus or trying to understand like a concept of physics. But I, I, I tell, I tell people I use my engineering uh, education daily because it's not just like the material, it's, it's the thought process and it's the concept of, you know, nothing is unsolvable. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's a and that's a huge thing for me is that there's a solution to a problem. You know, there there always is. You know, nothing is impossible. Um, and so for when you know I'm sitting in our dean's leadership meeting and we're we're dealing with a, a situation and we're kind of like brainstorming a little bit. You know, I'm just kind of sitting in the back and and like that that engineering thought process is just going. And I, when I got here, the first thing I said was, if we're in a problem solving mode, I'm just gonna sit in the back and just not say anything. Like, cause in my mind, I'm, I'm trying to come up with a solution. Like just that, that's just the way it is. And we're solution driven. And that's not to say that other disciplines aren't. It's just that engineering mentality of, okay, here's the problem. Let's go find a solution. Like go like snap of the fingers. Let's do it. Um, and so it's that plus it's the idea that, you know, you want to challenge. And I think of, you know, uh, I had some students out here, they had a, uh, our college of engineering does like a design day where, um, you know, they're given a challenge and they have to solve it. So I think one group here, um, they were focused on designing a light uh, aerial vehicle, almost like a mini drone, Mm -hmm. um, to be used, um, I think it was, uh, in mines. Uh, Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the mining community is kind of big out here in in Arizona. So how do you develop a, uh, a UAV that's small enough to go into mines, but durable enough to be in some, you know, austere conditions. And, you know, they talked about the design process. And I remember seeing them, seeing their um, uh, presentation, their poster board. And automatically, I'm just, you know, I'm an aerospace engineer. I started asking very direct questions. Like, you know, I see that you use, you know, this type of airfoil on these two motors and this type of airfoil on the other two. What's the difference between the two? You know, what's the coefficient of lift on this one compared to that one? You know, just just very technical questions, 
and the students were like, like slow down there, Sylvester. Like this is just a, a presentation. <laughs> <laughs> you're like geeking out too hard on him yeah <laughs> oh 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 man i was i was like i asked like which NACA airflow did you use this way and you know the part of the design team was like what are you talking about but then someone came running up who heard the question and was like this is the one we use and here's the coefficient of lift and you know showed me the graphs and charts and i i nerded the hell out on that one but i think the the education that i got from engineering school was that you know there are complex problems that you know re- that sometimes require some complex solutions to them, but you have to kind of dig to get to it. Uh, but I, the one thing I also learned, you know, from the undergraduate school was that to, to not discount other pieces of information that can help, and I think that's helped you know particularly in my job now and in my in previous jobs was that yeah I'm you know I'm an engineer by training you know I, I look at things as systems. But there's also like an education, the human element to it as well, that that you have to factor in, that you really have to consider because the stuff that you do impacts students' lives. Mm-hmm. Um, and for me, it was hard, like probably within my first couple of years, like hard to understand that. It was like, no, this is a system. The systems can be fixed, but you also understand that they impact students and their development and you know how they navigate like a campus culture. I think once I figured that out, it was like that. I mean, that was like the light bulb that went off for me. And I was like, okay, I can apply cert- I can apply that, that engineering mentality, but also to understand that, you know, it's not always going to work all the time. So, um, I mean, I think for me, I'm, I'm thankful I went to engineering school. I tell everybody, I said, you know, like, if you really want to, if you really want to challenge yourself, um, like take a couple engineering classes, take a design course, you know, or just go to engineering school. Cause I think then, then you'll see, you know, how, how problems can be solved, how complex stuff can be solved, but then also take like a human development class as well. Cause I actually took a lifespan development class in, in community college and that was incredibly insightful for me. That was by far probably one of the best courses I've ever taken in all, all of my years of school. Cause now I understand what happens to people as, as life moves on, you know, combining those two together, I think has, has made, has helped me get to where I am, honestly. Yeah, that's good stuff. Yeah, I mean, just that sort of like, you know, the yin and yang or something, you know, just like both sides yeah. kind of like equally balanced because I think, yeah, like that's definitely a lesson that I keep learning is like kind of moderation in all things or sort of the balance and harmony, just like things working well together of like, because mm-hmm. it could also be, yeah, if like if you were really one way or the other, just like building a team around you that helps complement the things that you do well and maybe don't do well or something. It's like, you know, find other people with different you know, strengths and stuff. But yeah, I mean, that's also just like a way to connect with students and the way that you like think and interact with people and all that, just like having that awareness and respect for your own path and the learning that you've had and the experiences that you've had and everything. Um, so, I mean, that's a nice segue, I guess, of leading to where you are now, you know, I, I, I imagine you know, it was even another big move. Like that was a deliberate decision, yeah. you know, to kind of, you know, go for this opportunity. So I guess just like quickly, like what, you know, you've kind of noted, I guess, some stuff already of just like the interactions that you've had um, as you've been there for this past year. But like, you know, what what maybe like drew you to that job or drew you to that institution? Like, what do you enjoy most about your uh, your current work? What I enjoy most about it, no no day is the same. No mm-hmm. two days are the same, and that and that's and that's real. I think yesterday I was dealing with a potential software issue that a group was going to use uh, to manage programs, and today. It was, uh, we have a camp coming up uh, in a couple of weeks for incoming students. And so working some logistics with that. And uh, tomorrow is uh, a meeting with someone about, we have a safe ride program that student government runs. And you know, how do we secure some more money so that, you know, we can get some new vehicles? And how do we expand our services? Um, you know, like I mentioned, I, love, I, like, I like the problem solving aspect of it. I like the fact that, um, you know, we're, you know, student government is designed to be, you know, all encompassing. You know, we provide things that students, you know, really need that sometimes the institution may not be able to, or they just don't see the kind of coming down the pipeline. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, like today I spent a chunk of time working with a colleague on, uh, we have a campus pantry that student government oversees. And so we're looking at expanding hours and how do we work with our college of agriculture to, you know, get some of the food that they grow and possibly, 
you know, get that to the to our pantry. I never thought when I took this job that I'd be handling logistics for, you know, getting food from, you know, our research farm to potentially give to students who are going through food insecurity. Never thought I'd be doing that. But that's those are the things that I really like is that it's a challenge and it makes you think on your feet. It was kind of a surprise to 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 come out here, like when the, the offer came to, hey, are you interested in, in Tucson, Arizona? And, you know, my spouse and I, we had just bought a home in Baltimore. Like, you know, the uh, uh, oh. Beverly Hills neighborhood, Laurelville? Uh, no, oh. I guess not. Yeah, I'm still getting, okay. yeah, still getting acquainted with the neighborhoods. Okay. Yeah. Has Jen taken you to Zeke's Coffee? Uh, I have, I've had them at a farmer's market. Okay. I've not actually gone to like location. Well, I, yeah. I live in the, I live in an area where Zeke's coffee is, gotcha. um, okay. and it's right next to like Maggie's farm and Coco's. Now, mm. now, 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 I, now I just want to get on a plane and go home and get a crab cake. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I will say this for everybody on the podcast. If you're in Baltimore, Coco's pub off, uh, off Harford road, um, in the Laurelville neighborhood, best crab cake hands down. Don't at me. Um, it's really good. Um, but we had just bought a house in that neighborhood and we were living, you know, pretty good. And the offer, the offer came like, Hey, do you want to come to Arizona? And, you know, we talked about it and it's like, it's, it, it has some things that I really wanted to do. Um, you know, I enjoy advising student government because they're in the mix on some, you know, up and coming, changing things here, um, on campus. And I have a great team of staff that I work with. Um, some of them have been here. They're, they're UA alums or they're from Tucson and, you know, they love the area and they like working with students. So, I mean, it's a lot of good things that are, that are, you know, kind of going on here. And, um, you know, I think on the flight back after the interview, I was like, this is going to be a tough decision, but, you know, talking with, with with my spouse about it, it became pretty easy to make. I was in the middle of that, uh, you know, once we got the offer, once I got the the offer, I had to put the house on the market, and then I had to defend my dissertation, like all within like six weeks. <laughs> um, yeah. So, but I mean, it, it it was a it was a good move, and it was difficult to move away because my family's from Baltimore. You know, yeah. they're they're all like in that area, so it was very difficult to move away from them. But I think they they understood the opportunity was here. Um, so, but I mean, there's there's a lot of things I like about you know what I do and where I'm at, and you know, like if I like. You know, I went to a land grant school at Iowa State, and so I'm like I'm deeply tied to the to the land grant mission of providing services and an education that gives back to the people of the state and being open and accessible. And so for me, you know, being in a land grant, like everything we do is open and accessible. Like, how does it tie back to to helping Arizonans? Um, and so here, that's a you know, with my staff and with the students, it's a, those are critical questions that I ask. Is that we're land grant, you know, we got people coming here from all walks of life because this is the type of school that we are. How how do we make sure that we provide the things that they need for them because they're they're dues paying students, mm. you know, and and those are you know critical questions I get to ask on a, pretty much every day, you know. So when the president comes in with a wild idea, my first question is, you're at a land grant now, how is this open and accessible to to all? You know, when the student comes in with a wild idea to have this program, like, okay, that's great, but who do, who cannot access it? Yeah. And, you know, you get to ask those critical questions. And so, I mean, I, I dig that. I mean, to me, that's to get people to start to think about that a little more. I mean, that's, that's something I, I thoroughly enjoy. Yeah. Yeah. Like it, it, like that sort of value driven focus and everything like resonates with you, but then you're also like empowered by it and like driven by it um, just to make sure that it's sort of top of mind uh yeah like you know every day like all the decisions that are made just always keep it uh keep it in mind and you know act upon it yeah uh, to make sure that you're living it out too and and my colleagues do the same do the same as well i mean you know i i have a great group of of colleagues within the dean of students office that we we tend to think that along the same lines and you know we understand the mission there there are quite a few who are arizona alums and they get it and so you know that was a draw for me was the they understand the mission and the needs of the university. And so for me, having been at Iowa state and gone to a land grant and worked at a land grant, I understood the mission of it. It just felt like a, it, felt, it really felt like a natural fit once I joined the team. So, I mean, it, I, it is very empowering and, you know, like, so we, we think about it consistently here. Well then uh, transitioning from that. So you've certainly established mm-hmm. your uh, geek nerd cred already. Um, <laughs> so uh, I guess, yeah, if you want to, you know, just kind of, Focus, I guess, on some of the 
you know, the lighter side, the fun stuff, the personal stuff, like, cause I think that, you know, part of the focus here for me, I always like, you know, highlighting it. Cause I think it still adds a lot to our lives, our like personal interests and hobbies and such. So, um, yeah, I mean, like, what do you geek out about currently? You know, is it newer stuff that you've just gotten into stuff you've been into forever? Uh, but yeah, just like stuff, uh, it's capturing your attention lately. I mean, hands down, I'm a, I'm a big aviation geek. I, I, yeah, that, that's, I've loved aviation and loved planes since I was a kid. Um, my dad was in the air force and he wasn't a pilot, but, uh, we were always around like air force bases. And so being around, uh, you know, driving down the flight line and seeing the jets and the, uh, and the helicopters and, you know, other planes around there, like to me, like even to this day, you know, there's a huge air force base here in Tucson, uh, and the flight path, uh, has, uh, fighter jets flying over campus, uh, for, for landing. And even to this day, when they fly over, I stop and I look up and I watch like, like I'm five again. Like, I, I, I mean, I just get a kick out of it. Um, when I lived in Baltimore, there was, there was a, 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 a park over by BWI airport where you can sit there and you can just watch planes land. And so I, I would go there. Um, I'm kind of dabbling in photography a little bit. So, like, I bought a nice little, you know, DSLR camera and would just snap photos just, like, to learn how to do, like, nighttime shooting and sports shooting and, um, and like, landscape, you know, first portrait and, you know, mm-hmm. things like that. Uh, I'm still not very good at it. I mean, if I can take a picture of, like, the chair that's sitting in the room and I can get that right, I'm, I'm perfect. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I... I've loved aviation since I was a kid. My, my office has a bunch of, you know, uh, snap together models of airplanes that I've picked up over, over the years. Uh, my spouse has told me not to buy anymore. <laughs> she's like, you know, get them out the house and then I have them in my office. And she came to my office. She's like, okay, you can't buy anymore. You have enough. But I have a few saved on my Amazon wish list so that when she's, when she doesn't notice, you know, I'll make a purchase and pick right. it up and take it to like the office. Anybody else? Like gifts. It's like, I can't control what they get me. I don't know. Like, you know, yeah, like, hey, listen, you know, it just randomly showed up, you know, <laughs> at my Amazon locker. Like, what am I supposed to do? Send, send it back? Right, right. <laughs> um, no, but I, I, I really dig that. I think now that I'm in, in Tucson, um, like I said, there's an Air Force base here. It's also the home of the what they call the Boneyard. Uh, it's the uh, military's um, kind of like storehouse for planes that they don't need. And uh, you can take a tour of the Boneyard. And I know that's something I'm just kind of work on is with the beginning of the semester. It's like, when can I like have a free weekend to take a tour of it? But you go and they, you know, they, my understanding is that they kind of drive you around on the bus and you can take pictures and, you know, see all the planes there. And, and, you know, my wife is like, just tell me the day that we're going and we'll go. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I, I really I dig that. I mean, I'm so much of a nerd. I listen to air traffic control on my computer um, <laughs> I, I, at work days just to just listen to the, you know, because me, I, I'm, I'm mathematically inclined. I, I, I like numbers. So when they say, you know, turn direction, here's your speed and knots and um, even like, you know, runway headings and things like that. Like I, I can visualize that kind of stuff. Uh, and so I, I, I like that, that aspect of it. I mean, I don't know if I could do the job, but I like listening to it, especially, you know, when I'm like, it helps me, it actually helps me focus. Hmm when I'm working on like emails and stuff. But, um, I think recently newer here, um, now being in Tucson where there's more breweries and stuff like that, I'm kind of getting into the craft local craft beer scene here. Yeah. Yeah. It's a little weird. I never thought I would, um, when I moved out here, but now I'm becoming a bit of a snob of it. (laughs) Um, but I mean the, the, I, I met when, when I moved out here, I moved out here like in the summer and summers in Tucson are just brutal. It's just, it's just consistently hot all the time. Uh, but someone mentioned like, Hey, listen, when it's like October, it's like 80 degrees outside and you could sit outside at, after, after work and have dinner outside and have a beer and just enjoy it. And in part, I, I kind of bought into that. So, you know, my spouse and I do that pretty regularly. But, um, and the other thing I, I really nerd out about quite honestly is, uh, is sports in general, but the NBA, hmm. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a huge Washington Wizards fan and I'm probably the only Washington Wizards fan, uh, probably in Tucson. I haven't met a single, I haven't met another one. You know, the, the community of us, you know, is pretty small. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but the one thing I did and it kind of connects to social media is, um, 
the radio announcer for the Wizards, he does uh, he has a hashtag on on Twitter called Radio Party. And so before you know, during every game, he says, "Hey, you know, tweet at me. Let me know where you're at, and you use the hashtag Radio Party." And and it's a way to commun- It's a way to connect with a community of other Wizards fans on on on, on social media. And so every game, I you know, say, "Hey, so it's a Sylvester. I'm here, you know, in Tucson, you know, Radio Party." And he'll call your name out on the radio and where you're at. So, you know, there's a guy from the Bahamas and there's a fan from Hawaii and someone, you know, in England who's, you know, up early to listen to the game. And, you know, there's, there's Dr. Gaskin in, in, in Tucson and it's, it's a way to, to, to connect and meet up with other, uh, Wizards fans. Cause you know, like I said, there, I doubt there are like many of us around here. It's particularly outside the DMV. Um, but I, we actually, um, uh, my spouse and I, uh, we connect, you know, we both tweet at, 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 at the, uh, at the announcer at, at Dave Johnson. Um, and when the wizards were in Phoenix, uh, last year, you know, he tweeted us, like he, he tweeted at us like, well, will I see you in Phoenix? And I'm like, hell yeah. I already bought two quarts of tickets, man. I'm going <laughs> to be there. And we actually, actually met, uh, the announcer, Dave Johnson. Uh, and it was actually kind of funny because, um, he and I went to the same high school, but just not at the same time. Hmm. And I'm like, yeah, here we are meeting meeting in Arizona, and here's two, you know, you know, two guys from the same high school together. And we had a nice chat at halftime, and you know, we're like, you know, we follow you, you know, wherever the team goes, and and throughout the year, um, you know, we tweet at it. So I, I nerd out about about my Wizards because there's a community of people that all across the country that you know like this team and want to see them, you know, see them succeed. So. But I'm I'm a big play nerd at heart. I mean I'm I don't know if there are any other av geeks uh, in in student affairs. I haven't met any of them. You know I like you know when I go to when I go to NASPA, you know there isn't like a like an av geek meetup. <laughs> not and yet. There is, I mean, maybe, maybe not yet. <laughs> I just put it out there in the universe. Well, I don't. We're, we're, here's the one thing I I, I'm, I really like about NASPA being in LA is that uh, there's an in and out right next to LAX where you can watch planes land and have an in and out burger, you know. So I'm like, I know, I'm, I may bring bring a couple of geeks with right. me. You know, we get a double double, sit there and just watch, you know, planes land at LAX. Yeah, build some time in for that. I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, like I, yeah, I'm definitely gonna build that into the uh, into the schedule um, for NASPA. So, but you know, it, it's. You know, when I tell people I like aviation, they, they think it's kind of cool because, you know, then they start asking me how planes fly and they think it's magic. I'm like, no, it's not magic. It's physics. Um, you know, it's just a, you know, just it's this is how it, this is how it works. Um, but, you know, sometimes that, you know, talking about aviation is a foray to talking about other things, particularly with professionals. Um, I try not to nerd out too much <laughs> about it. I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to draw people away. But, um but it's kind of cool to mention, you know, I, I'm a rocket scientist. I'm not a practicing rocket scientist, but my degree says that, you know, I could be one. Yeah. Well, that's cool, though. I mean, yeah, cause I think it's such a unique thing. It's still relatively new. So that's why so many people is just like, you know, it's kind of like unnatural that, uh, yeah, they think it's magic. And like, you know, you get into one of them, you know, for a trip and you're just like nervous because you're just like what is even happening i don't understand but it's like you know the reassuring thing i listen to some podcasts about like airplane travel why so many people are like anxious about it and whatever it's like yeah just that like you know it's still relatively new and like when one crashes it's so noteworthy that, you know everybody talks about it for like a week or more or something but it's like yeah it's very rare and it catches the news and headlines because it's so rare it's just like one of those things and um but yeah it's like so many plates go off like every single day and it's yeah it's i mean it's physics and it's science and like you know yeah it's just that neat thing of having an appreciation for that of just like yeah like you're saying like human beings can solve problems if you know they work together and like you know just really think it through and test things and all that but um yeah it's just really cool yeah that's something that's just like a deep you know ongoing interest for you and i was not aware that you could listen to air traffic control or you know stuff like that so that's a that's a new thing that i've learned there but um yeah and i guess it's just like yeah there's still just kind of a majestic kind of element to it just that because i feel like a lot of airports have that where you can you know watch the airplanes uh, land or take off or whatever your, whatever yeah. your preference <laughs> i'm sure many of the listeners are going to immediately run out and and you know start listening to air traffic control and wonder like what the hell are they talking about <laughs> 
Uh, I actually was on a flight once where um, you could listen to air traffic control um, uh, through like you know uh, like the entertainment system right, right. on board, and the pilot would say, "Hey, listen, we're flying here. If you l- turn it to this channel, and you if you have any idea what we're saying, I'll buy you a drink." <laughs> And, and, you know, people, you know, people are just like, yeah, sure, whatever. And I, I remember a flight time walked by and I said, listen, you might, might want to tell the captain, um, he owes me a drink when we land. And she, and she kind of laughed and chuckled off and said, no, I'm serious. Like, I, I'll, I, I will listen. I will know exactly everything they're talking about. And she was like, why? I said, well, I listen to this at work, like on the regular. And she was like, you, she kind of looked at me like I was like, well, okay, calm down, nerd. <laughs> It's just like, like that's really nerdy, and I'm like, well, yeah, you got to nerd out over things, and this is the one thing that I do nerd out over. Yeah, it's kind of cool. I mean, I think uh, my nephew, like I said, he gets nervous about flying, and so he'll ask me questions about stuff, and that calms him down a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, I know when I travel with my spouse, sometimes she'll ask me questions like, why is this and why is that, and I, I'm able to answer it. Um, it's a cool, unique skill to have. Yeah, or like you know, because I think there's parts like that that manifest in different ways of like oh like what did you want to be when you grow up or yeah like your undergrad major or some you know involvement that you had maybe like growing up or something like that's always just going to be a part of what you are of like you know you're always going to have that like you learned so much about it in school and all that like i always thought when i grew up for reasons i don't know um but like i always thought i was going to be like an author like that was the answer i would use for like what do you want to be when you grow up and then it's like yeah i've been doing you know kind of like freelance writing and all that so it's sort of manifested in that way but um yeah, it is funny that like a uh, story about the flight you're on because it's like part of it's just like it's all been leading to this. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's all been leading to a free can of coke right, right. after a flight to Chicago. <laughs> but um, no, nah, it's 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 cool, and it's and it's cool to be, you know, when you go when I go like plane spotting, you know, wherever I travel, I take my camera and I do some plane spotting. Um, and it's cool to meet other folks who just have that passion for it as much as you do. Or they have a passion for like photography, um, you know. As I go out there and I take I take pictures, you know, you meet the other folks who who do the same thing as well, and they and they just nerd out with you as well. Or I remember one time I was I was plane spotting at BWI and I was taking pictures, you know, just start my little ranking in camera, and you know, so I ran to a guy. He had his you know telephoto lens and had an air traffic control scanner with him, and uh, just sitting there just enjoying it. I'm like, you know what? That's you know that's the life. Mm. That you know, and and my spouse was like, that that's kind of a cool thing to do. Um, so like, you find a passion, you find something you want to nerd out with, go go for it, yeah. full force. Yeah, love it. Um, well, I guess then. Um, so one of the things that you listen to is air traffic control uh, stations and stuff. But um, yeah, I guess anything else that you're consuming specifically, like pieces of content, anything that you're like reading, watching, and or listening to um, that you'd want to recommend oh. that we can include in the show notes. Wow, that's a that's a good question. I think I've like I, th- I think I dabble in different things. Um, just be, just depends on my mood. I think um, the fact that the semester's ramping up, I haven't watched a lot of TV. And the one thing I, I do I try to consume, particularly summer, is I'm a I'm a pretty voracious reader. You know, I try to I try to re- read as many books as I can. And I think over the summer, um, I read I read a few that were really interesting to me. Um, I mean, I'm kind of into like history, but more like more like recent history. Uh, so I read, and you know, you've been in Baltimore. I read the oral history of the wire. Mm-hmm. It's a book called all the pieces matter. Um, I forgot, I forgot who wrote it, but it, it, I heard the title. I, I saw it like pop up on my Twitter feed and I pre-ordered it immediately. I was like, I was like, I gotta get this book. And I read it and I, I think I read it, uh, on a three hour flight. Like I just, I just tore through it. It, it was amazing. Um, I read uh, W. Kamau Bell's kind of biography, um, yeah, him growing up uh, in Berkeley and becoming a comic, and now you know doing his TV show on CNN. And my wife and I have seen him uh, on stage a couple times. He's probably one of my favorite comedians. Um, I've been consuming a lot of comedy specials on Netflix. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, so I've I've seen John Mulaney's new one, Hari Kondabalu's new one. I think is is amazing. Um, and I just have to look at see, I, I just heard that Hassan Minaj is coming up with a new show on Netflix. Um, and so I, I, I consume that, you know, if it's not a baseball game, it's something on Netflix. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I've actually, the other thing I've been watching on Netflix is last, last chance you, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
on, on Netflix. And I, I, you know, the first two seasons were in the school in Mississippi. I'm like, yeah, it's okay. The coach is kind of a jerk. Uh, the third season, you know, it's a small school in Kansas. The coach is a white guy from Compton, California. Um, my wife grew up in Compton. And so she's like, I got to watch this with you. You know, and so when the coach says something, she goes, yeah, that's that's definitely L.A. That's definitely California. I'm like, yeah, I, I kind of get it. She goes, no, trust me. What he said right there is definitely California. I'm like, I'm not doubting you <laughs> on that one. Yeah. So, and, you know, like I said, it's it's for now that I'm no longer a doctoral student, you know, I can actually unwind and, and, and do some of these things. Uh, I, I um, For a minute, I was kind of into different podcasts. Um, so I listened to um, – there's a higher ed one, uh, the committed project, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, so I listen to that, uh, regularly, um, outside of higher ed. I do the, um, I did, uh, I listened to the American fiasco podcast about the, uh, I think it was the 97, 98 U S men's soccer team. Okay. Right. Um, and it's, and it's, uh, curated by, uh, by one of the guys from men and blazers. And then that's another thing I'm kind of nerdy out now. And I think a lot of people are is soccer in America. Mm-hmm. Um, but I listen to that and actually I'll, I'll tell you this, my, where my building is to where my parking garage is, is a good distance. It's probably close to like three quarters of a mile. Uh, and it's hot during the summer. So like I had to like mentally prepare to make the walk and you have a big water jug. And so what I started doing was just putting on a podcast and just making the walk mm-hmm. and actually made the walk a whole lot faster. Like you just, you're just listening to listen to the podcast. And so, um, I listened to that. Uh, there are a couple aviation podcasts I listened to, um, you know, talking about, Oh, Boeing is designing this or here's a new sales market or, you know, the farm borough air show was, was recently and Boeing v Airbus, like who had the most orders, who had the most unique orders. You know, like I said, I had to make that walk in a hundred degree heat. <laughs> might as well make, I might as well make it interesting with something. Yeah. So. Cause they, like, otherwise you're just like, your brain's just like, it's really hot. I just don't want to be hot anymore. Like, why is it so hot? Yeah. It's like, I'm not, I'm not going to make it. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to make it to the parking garage. And then like, it's like putting one foot in front of the other, but that American fiasco one, like it made my walks a whole lot shorter. Oh, that's great. And when I got to the car, I just kept listening to it. Um, and, um, you know, the committed project ones are exactly the same way. Once I start going, like, you know, I start listening to it, you know, but next thing you know, I'm in my car. Yeah. I'm ready to go. So it's, it's, you know, those are the things that I've been consuming a lot of. Um, and probably, well, as, as the days get longer and, you know, the walks can be shorter here. Um, and it's not so hot, just stuff, stuff to like help me decompress, you know, the day. So, yeah, very good. Um, so we'll find that stuff and link it out in the uh, show notes. If folks want to check it out. Um, yeah. But, uh, yeah. If, if, if people want to listen to uh, air traffic control, there's live Uh That's the, the URL and they have a, they have an app. Uh, I think it's both on Apple and on Google play. Hmm. Um, you know, I, like I said, you know, I'm sure many of your listeners are going to you know, rush to it as soon as they hear it. But <laughs> you just had um, like curiosity, just like to, I just want to like hear what it's like. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it, it, it could be some interesting stuff. Um, yeah, I know there's been like a lot of storms and rain in, in, in the Baltimore area. You know, my family's told me like it just will not stop mm-hmm. like thunderstorming and raining out there. And so I listen to air traffic control in Baltimore, and, and it's interesting to listen to how they navigate. You know, all these planes, like, I got to get out of here. And I'm like, well, there's a thunderstorm overhead. Like, you're not going anywhere. Like, it's a, it's a good example of, of, of stress management and human interaction. Oh, man. It, it, it could do a case study on that, like, anytime. Yeah. Like, if, yeah, if you had, like, an algorithm that could, like, analyze sentiment and, like, I don't know, just, like, something. Because it's, like, yeah, it's a high-stakes thing. It could be very stressful. Like, a lot of people, like, want... You know, like air traffic control needs to keep everyone safe and like pilots and yeah. all that. They're managing people who want to get their flight to where they need to be and all that. You know, like it, yeah, it's a whole thing. Um, but uh, well, yeah, we'll, we'll wrap up here. Um, just end our episode on an optimistic note as we always do. So mm-hmm. um, what is something or things that you are looking forward to in your life, job and or the world? Yeah, you know, the, the school year is going to be starting here within a week and a half. Uh, and so like professionally, I think we have a new, we've got a new group of student leaders coming in. Uh, they're really motivated to do some positive change on campus. Uh, they're really, I think they've really kind of bought into the idea of service to all students. 
and uh, and how do they, you know, not only be successful themselves, but kind of tie back into that lane for a mission of service. And so I'm really excited. They're starting to trickle back in. Oh, uh, you know, we have our camp for first year students next week. Uh, they they all they all the campers come in on Sunday, uh, and so it's going to be exciting to see you know a group of incoming students and their families excited you know to like what may become a new here and the opportunities that they have for them. So I'm really like I, I know a lot of people say like the beginning of the year is stressful. You know, like I completely get it. You know, everybody's coming back, and you know we're you know the you know the train's going to leave the station. But I actually really enjoy it. I mean, I I really enjoy August and the beginning of the year. Uh, because that means that it's back to work. Yeah, it's back to what we do. You know, it's, it's how we do. So, um, and and I'm optimistic for the I'm optimistic for the year. Um, I think you always have to start the year optimistic. If you start the year like, oh crap, here we go again. <laughs> it's never going to go well for you. Right. Um, but I'm optimistic for you know the good things that are going to come out this year. So. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, always a good reminder and a perfect place to uh, end the episode here. Um, and uh, yeah, just really appreciate all that you've shared and um, you making the time for the show here. And uh, yeah, just have a uh, good rest of your day and a good weekend coming up here. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Tell Jen I said hi. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, thanks again. And I'll, uh, yeah, I'll talk to you later. This podcast is a proud member of the Connect EDU Podcast Network bringing together diverse voices and thoughtful discussions to the higher ed community. Check us out online at connectedu.network or on Twitter at connectedupod. Thanks for listening to this episode of the podcast. Make sure to rate, review, and subscribe so you never miss an episode. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you in the next episode of the Higher Ed Geek Podcast.